Hi, how are you doing? Welcome to my daily live session on various topics uh, and methods from my toolkit for uh, execution excellence. My name is uh, Dinakar. I am the founder of Samuthana and the inventor of uh, Duha. Uh, before uh, I continue with the presentation of my tool, let me invite you to our uh, Duha experiential webinar uh, on 28th of February. Uh, which is mainly to understand, appreciate and participate in a very, very interactive uh, web workshop is what I call it as. So please uh, visit uh, my site uh, and then uh, register for that uh, event. It's on Sunday, 28th uh, February at 11 o'clock Indian Standard Time. So with that very brief uh, introduction, let me directly jump into the recap of yesterday's uh, topic, which I spoke, which was about uh, the KPIs or key performance indicators, or I call it as uh, metrics or uh, uh, could also be called as uh, uh, business metrics or uh, success metrics or whatever you know and these basically include the lead indicators lag indicators and all the various measurements that we are doing in uh, companies and i spoke about three core uh, areas which i from my wisdom uh, believe are the are the three uh, what should i say uh, most important uh, aspects of the kpi i didn't really talk about the kpi tree i said i'll do that on a different day that's the way you link the kpis to various uh, uh, mission statements and various uh, vision statements and various uh, strategic goals that I'll do it on a different day because it's a different tool. <laughs> this is only talking about the KPI per se as an individual standalone entity. And uh, the three key uh, attributes which I spoke about was uh, one that the KPI has to be in some way or the other uh, clearly understood by everybody. And there should be a clear standard as to where the data is going to come from and how the KPI will be computed. What is the way that will be calculated? And that has to be clear, absolutely clear without any ambiguity at all. So unambiguous standard is the first success factor I spoke about. The second, which is what possibly the most success factor for getting people excited and energized in any company is to always do like to like comparisons. I spoke about only comparing big onions with big, big, big onions, not even the small onions with big onions. They don't make sense at all. So always compare like to like. That was the second. Uh, learning from my experience. And the third one, which I spoke about, was about the clock speed. So I hear a, a reference to the quantum physics, where uh, you look at a quantum particle, then the particle behaves in a different way. Similarly, the organizations, when you look at a particular KPI at a different clock speed, then it is going to behave differently. The Either it will worsen or uh, 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 normally it will worsen. It will not really improve at all. So the clock speed is extremely important. Therefore, it is. Uh, wise and nice that you define the correct clock speed and at the same time ensure that it is like to like comparable and prepare a standard and also i said that look this looks very easy it is not not that easy at all you need a lot of wisdom to really define the right uh, standard the right kpi and the right uh, comparable uh, uh, parameter comparable benchmarks and also to make sure that the clock speed is right i also uh, suggested and, and offered that each one of you are most welcome to write to me my name is Dinakar at samutana.com. So with that uh, very brief recap of what I did yesterday, let me directly jump into today's topic, which is uh, uh, Kenchi Omai 3C model. I don't know whether you've heard of this. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, and a very, very simple way of explaining strategy uh, when we really look at uh, the holistic picture of any business. Well, let us forget about all the big jargons which are there in the industry. These guys are Japanese. Japanese are very, very simple. They're extremely simplistic people. And therefore, this model also looks very simple. Therefore, I don't want to get into the other uh, mode. I'll continue speaking like this. You can look at my face also <laughs> the uh, and my facial expressions too. Uh, this is something which is very, very simple. I said Japanese are simple. That's where the lean manufacturing was born. The lean concepts were born in Japan. Simple and uh, very straightforward. So here, when you are doing a strategy, uh, there are three aspects to be considered, which is quite uh, common sense. This is our three C's of uh, strategy, which is or any chain management or to understand the business. Always the three C's are uh, required. One is the corporation, which is the company or the company per se. And company has got some desire, some uh, needs and some aspirations that need to be considered in the strategy. And the customer has uh, some uh, needs and desires, which is definitely the key why the company exists. So it's important that the company's needs and uh, aspirations and desires and wishes, expectations are considered thoroughly in the strategy. And the third would be the competitors. It's also important to understand the competitor landscape. And without knowing that, offering something to the customer may really sound very, very exciting in the initial days. And after that, it will fizzle out because uh, 
competitors are damn good you know be as a company even this company is going to be com copying the competitors and the competitor also will be copying this uh, this company i remember uh, when i was in bosch we used to have a very very tough uh, what should i say tug of war between uh, bosch and denso or bosch, bosch and uh, 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 lucas and uh, that is uh, in my comp my is life life i am talking about each one trying to uh, steal the other's patents and then uh, copy it around the, the, those those used to go on and on and on and in the public world uh, you have the uh, issue between uh, apple and samsung uh, each one trying to copy and mind you it's a very very interesting uh, uh, situation to be in because uh, in companies this particular act of uh, copying and checking out the patents of the others and trying to do what is called as uh, benchmarking exercise and then try to strip down the products once it once it gets launched in the market and then try to see how do you re-engineer re that in for a small company you call it as copying is a very big cheat and you know all that uh, will be uh, attached because the big ones are really playing the and dominating the market they don't want the small ones to come up therefore uh, the uh, names of uh, uh, cheat copying and all that is attached whereas the big ones have a very very interesting strategy this strategy is called it's a very very strong strategy for all innovative companies the strategy is called as you know what patent research and all these companies got big teams. Uh, even in Bosch, we had a pretty big team doing patent research. What are they doing? Daily, they are checking with uh, their uh, uh, wisdom of uh, data mining and the experience of data mining in trying to find out what kind of patents are being published, uh, which could help us. And uh, mind you, there are also strategies, which I want to now share it with you. When some of the patents are published, knowing that the customer is going to copy, and we know that it won't work. <laughs> as a company, you have tried it out. It won't work. So publish that as a, <coughs> a patent. So the competitor will copy it. So that, that's something which is extremely important to understand that this competitor world is very, very essential because without the competition, there is no possibility of copying. So the progress gets, uh, uh, what should I say, dulled out. It, it really gets dampened out. So if you want real progress and speedy progress, it's mandatory to have competition and also to have uh, in, uh, what should I say, very, very sophisticated terms, patent research going on in your company. And this patent research means that I look at what the other person has done, the competitor has done, and try to further develop it or try to go around. You know, there, there could be some patent where it is talking about some specific process. That is the most dangerous one. Many people with a lot of excitement to really show that the patents are being done. We used to really discourage that in Bosch. Moment you do a process patent, that's a, that's kind of a, a funeral because you are trying to explain to that other fellow as to how it will be made or how it will be designed, how it will be developed. That is very, very dangerous. And that copying will never be known because it's always will remain within the company. Where you could really patent would be those ones where it is visible. That means you immediately see on the board and you can find out that it is the wrong one. You know, my daughter, when she was in high school, she did that uh, research on uh, uh, brands which are being copied, you know, McDonald's, McDowell's. You know, it's, it's things of that kind, you know, or, 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 or uh, Lay's chips, and then there is some, some, something called Lay's, L-A-Y-Z. Everything looks like, but the spellings are different. So customers many a times get taken uh, take, uh, taken for a ride or uh, what bottled water. There are a lot of people who are doing that. So there you can really find out and easily uh, prosecute them because it's a, definitely, of course, uh, legally not a lot that you, you, you really take out somebody's uh, 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 trademark and then start uh, 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 playing around that but that is done by many people to gain the market share because they people are uh, basically interested in gain, gaining customers and especially when you're a startup company when you're new in the business uh, you really have very good products very good competence but then breaking it to the customer is extremely difficult because the customer doesn't know you he doesn't really have any trust and unless the trust gets developed it is very very difficult to really break into that uh, uh, market and therefore people adopt all kinds of strategies like for example geo which went on to really offer uh, free uh, telephones, free uh, SIM cards for everybody for almost uh, a year, I suppose. And then later they started charging. Now that they're, they're not giving anything free now. I also have a geo uh, uh, dongle for uh, connecting to the vibe, uh, internet. And that, that costs money, it is not free at all. Initially it was all free. It was really big bonanza. And that could be another strategy. So th these are all the various market entry strategies. That is not what I'm going to talk about today. But then what is important is to really link the customer competition and company all together when you are uh, uh, conducting a strategy in any kind of a strategy development all the three are to be considered and uh, that's as simple as that <laughs> any strategy you have got you ask yourself whatever strategy you have got is it benefiting the company is it benefiting the customer or is it beating the competition not benefiting beating the competition so it's all b but then beating and here it is benefiting so you look at that if it is the answer is uh, no then that strategy is wrong 
whatever be the idea you have got, it may be a fantastic idea, but it doesn't fit into that particular company and that particular business. So that's a very, very brief introduction of uh, Kenchi Omai 3C model. So we would be more than happy to uh, help you out discover more uh, in this space. Uh, if you want, you can please write to me. I already shared my email earlier. Let me share once again. It is uh, dinakar at uh, samutana.com. I would be more than happy to help you out on that. With that, I come to the end of today's uh, live session. A very brief one. I want to now keep it uh, around 10 minutes, 10 to 11 minutes. And let me give a very, very big, uh, uh, quick peek into what uh, I'm going to be so speaking on Monday. Uh, Monday's uh, topic would be on balance scorecard. Uh, I'll try to make a better slide. I think it's not that good. Balance scorecard. And this is something which is also equally interesting. Uh, we'll speak about that on Monday. Until then, for those of you in India, have a nice evening. For those of you outside India, have a great day ahead. And uh, wish you all a very nice weekend. And see you all on uh, Monday. Keep watching and keep sharing also. That's very important. I, I'm doing this uh, free of cost. I spend my time. I spend my research. It's a good amount of research is done before I talk to you all uh, about all these things. And also, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sharing my experience and wisdom uh, without really attaching any finance uh, uh, obligations to that. So please feel free and then share it to all your friends and colleagues. Uh, let the younger generation know whatever that, uh, uh, you, that, that, that can be used as a wisdom, you know. Uh, so with that, thanks a lot and uh, goodbye. See you on uh, Monday evening at 8.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Thank you and bye-bye.